Okay, let's take a look at my mistakes here. So with the first generation Byte 90, it was really simple because I just needed the ADXL module, right? And it was simple to design, but with Gen 2, I wanted to add more components, specifically a speaker module. Now this made it a little bit more challenging, but if you take a look at my PCB, I also have a few other components like this charging module here because I want it to, um, you know, quick access to the battery, just plug and play kind of thing. And then at the bottom of the PCB, I also have this button integrated here so I don't have to solder it on. Now that first iteration had some mistakes that I didn't notice until I designed the second iteration. And these are really newbie mistakes because if you look at this button here, I wire it up incorrectly so the button actually doesn't even do anything. Um, <laughs> I would have to rotate it to fix it. Um, the second biggest mistake I have is not paying attention to the polarities on the LEDs. So they actually don't even light up because it's um, you know soldered on incorrectly. But those are really just minor mistakes. But the biggest one here is this charging module that I've included here. Um, it's creating like a big issue with the board itself. Uh, mainly uh, the USB doesn't get detected anymore when the battery's connected. And what's funny is that I didn't notice any of these mistakes aside from the button itself until I made this third iteration of the PCB. Um, with this third iteration, all those issues carry over and it sucks because um, I thought this was the perfect board uh, ready to go. However, you know, as I mentioned, the biggest mistake here is this charging module um, because I wanted the convenient factor of just, you know, plugging in um, the battery itself so that I don't have to solder anything, um, you know, underneath. However, I did correct it, the, the button wiring and functionality on this iteration. So after troubleshooting and like physically removing several components, um, I found the solution is to really just use the internal charging um, module on the ESP itself. Um, so you can see here I've actually wired the the internal charging module directly to the you know battery connector, um, and then to resolve that USB issue, I actually had to disconnect the the five volt pin physically um, from the board itself because apparently my external charging module affected that pin and it confused the internal charging module um, and then making the USB not detectable. So this is my hack uh, fix uh, just to kind of get the board working. But yeah, so what I've learned is that the charging module I used here for the convenience factor was uh, meant to be used on a ESB module that didn't have charging built in already. And you know, this is like a lesson learned because I'm new to electronics is to really pay attention with the polarities on some of these components uh, before you send it to production. Because on this iteration, um, all these components I paid for are really just useless and they're sitting there doing nothing because they don't even work. <laughs> and yeah, so these are some of the challenges I'm, you know, going through and I'm learning because I'm new to electronics and you know, AI is really helping me explain all these uh, factors. But once again, I can't anticipate these issues because I don't know any better um, to spot them before I get them um, back from production here. But yeah, this is a temporary board for now for me to develop on. Um, I've already fixed the schematic, so I'm just waiting for the new batch of PCBs to come. Um, hopefully they work and they don't have any more issues. So yeah, that's an update on Byte 90 Series 2. Um, like and follow for more and I'll keep you guys posted. I'm hoping I could launch this uh, pretty soon.